I've been a potter for decades. I've, I've been telling everybody for years and years. I started when I was 12, which is true. And when I first started potting, I didn't have a whole lot of money to go to this pottery supply store and buy all the fancy tools. So I started making my own. Now, decades later, I'm still making my own tools and I thought it would really be fun to share with you the tools that I make. I don't think a person has to own a lot of tools, but when you're making something out of clay and you get to that place where I need a, that's when you need to buy a new tool, that's when you need to get a new tool and chances are you can just make that yourself. So I've come up with the idea of our newest series is three handmade tools. Mainly because it's so much fun to go three handmade tools. You could try it at home when no one's looking to try it. Three handmade tools. It's fun. Anyway, our first set of tools, we're going to just start very, very basically. When you first sit down on the wheel, you need a sponge. Now, a long time ago, I had, a, a, it, it ties in, trust me, stick with me. Long time ago, I had a dead couch in the basement that weighed 18,000 pounds. And we carried that guy down there. I said, I'm never carrying it back out. So we didn't carry it back out, but we carried it out in sections. And as I sectioned this, this, uh, couch, which was fun with the saw and it was all noisy and exciting, I came across this big vat of upholstery sponge and went, aha! So I have, I'm still using it, I'm still cutting it into, into pieces. And the nice thing about it is you can cut it into all sizes you like. The first size is you can do little pieces for getting little corners and sculpting. You can do a medium size. If you're working with kids, you can cut it to fit their hands. I like to throw with a big sponge. And so our first and first tool in our series of three handmade tools is your basic sponge. I know you don't have a dead couch in the basement that you've cut it, but you might. <laughs> Reciprocating saw is very cool. Anyway, I know you don't have a dead couch and if you do, keep the foam. If you don't, just go to an upholstery shop and buy a vat of two inch foam. You will have sponges till the cows come home. If you don't have cows, it's a very, very long time. Okay, now we've got our sponges. We can attach these sponges to a stick. These are basic sticks. If you're going to attach your sponge to a stick, cut it the size you like, and then just take a knife and, and, or scissors and cut a little dent in there, and then poke your stick in there and tie it up with some fishing line. Uh, this is a nice, I like this one the best, but I did learn, uh, if you're gonna use a chopstick, a chopstick has a fat end and a thin end. I put it on the fat end because if you put the sponge on the skinny end and you go down and clean your pot, it makes little divots in there, trust me. Just don't ask me how I know. So you can use a chopstick. Uh, if a bigger piece, or bigger piece or a taller vase, it's nice to put on a wooden spoon because you really can get hold of it and go down in a narrow neck. Or you can just find a little stick. This used to be a honey dipper and now it's a dead stick with a sponge on it. So there's sponges as a handmade tool and sponges on a stick. And the next basic tool you need is a wire. Uh, I like to make my own wires, otherwise it wouldn't be included in the three handmade tools. <laughs> I like to make two kinds of wires. Uh, the first wire is attached to the second wire. The first wire is just a piece of 40 pound test fishing line. It's attached, tied to a couple of clothespins, and it's a great wire. You can do short ones and long ones, depending on what you need them for. You can make your own, and 40 pound test, well, not very many people can break that. And I like to use the wire, this thin one, when I'm working right on the wheel head to cut off mugs and whatnot, or if I'm throwing off the hump to cut off little pieces, you can cross them and pull them and cut little pieces off the hump. And I also make a wire wire, because it's made out of wire and it's called a wire. I make a wire wire, and this is a thin metal wire. You can buy a spool of thin wire at the hardware store and make your own by tying it between two clothespins but I gotta tell you my wire story. This is really cool. Um, it all ties in like the couch did. Uh, back in the late, four, late 30s, my father was in the military and he wanted to join the army, but he got a medical discharge. He just wasn't well enough, but he really wanted to be a part of the military effort. So he went up to uh, Dawson Creek and he went up to the nor up north of Dawson Creek and he started working and building the Alaska Highway. But he was told before he got there he had to have a certain set of supplies. In that set of supplies he bought in the late 1930s was this spool of wire. <laughs> it's been in my family. I'm not sure how I happened to hang on to it after all these years, but it means quite a bit to me. Um, it's, it's been making wires for me. I've been making wires probably for some other potter long after I'm gone. 
Anyway, not everyone has a dad that was not accepted into the Canadian military, yada, yada, yada. Go to the hardware store, get a spool of wire, and make your own. I like to use the wire wire when I'm cutting um, bigger pieces off the board when I'm working on a bat, because if you use the nylon wire, chances are it's going to just um, not cut enough and suck right down and join. So there we have sponges, we have sponge on a stick, we have wires, and we have the first in our series of three <laughs> handmade tools.